Hello. Hi. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, so thanks for doing this. We have artist Lil Mariko um on the Stevie Weeby Show Zoom editions. <laughs> um, I I was you were highly recommended through my social media, and I just I checked you out and I'm like, okay, cool. She seems like an up and coming cool artist. Uh, so you're on the East Coast. Yeah, currently in Vermont. <laughs> oh, cool. So were you born and raised on the in Vermont? No, actually Houston. Oh, you're from Texas. <laughs> yeah, and then oh. I I moved to New York City for school and stuff, and then because um, of Corona. I'm, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> cool. Um. So, yeah. I, I mean, I you know I was watching some of your your music. How would you define your? It's kind of hard to put it in a box. It like it, it's like electronic, but like screamcore punk. It's it's a fusion of stuff, huh? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Yeah. I, I describe it as like meme garbage. <laughs> but it's unique. It's it's different than you can't really categorize it. It's just you're doing your own thing. I, I, I guess, yeah. I mean it's just kind of like a um just like mixture of like a bunch of different influences just to like make this like kind of trashy, <laughs> like kind of fun. It's fun. I I'm glad you said fun because it seems like you're having a lot of fun even in your videos and everything. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the whole thing started is just, like, me and uh, my boyfriend, Jared, just, like, messing around in the studio and just, like, you know, like, here, let's let's make a funny song. We're bored. And now, Jared, does he go by full tack? Yeah. <laughs> okay, see, I did my research. I'm like, okay. Oh. That, yeah, because I thought either that was the case or you're, like, like, you guys were, like, in a group or, but you just said it, okay? <laughs> So yeah. let's talk about some of your um your history and your back. So you're originally you're originally from Texas, you said? Yeah, um Houston, Texas. Uh I lived there for most of my life, but traveled a little bit when I was younger because my dad's job we moved around a bit, but we went back to Houston and I like finished up high, like middle school and high school there. What what was it like? Um, I've never been to Texas. I I'm I I would love I, I would love to visit Texas. Are there a lot of Asians out there? Uh you know, it's funny. Houston has, like, extremely, like, diverse, like, demographic, right? But uh, the area that I happen to live in Houston was not diverse at all. So I, like, went to this, like, giant high school, and there are literally, like, 10, like, less than 10 Asians in my Whoa. grade. Yeah, like, my graduating class was, like, a thousand-something kids, and there's literally, like, less than 10 Asians. That's in the not a lot at all. Yeah, so you that's crazy. Uh, were you self conscious about that? Did you all like know each other? Like, how did that work out? I feel like I was shunned by a lot of the other Asians for being crazy. <laughs> oh, I, so you were an outcast amongst the outcasts, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, wow. So, <laughs> typically, I'm not trying to generalize, but I, I gotta keep it real. Usually, like Asians that they're uh, they're considered studious. Um, they're, they're, they got their shit together. They're going to either be a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, do some kind of profession like that. And I take it that you, you didn't kind of mesh yeah. well with that type of thing. <laughs> Not really. I mean, like grade wise, like I was fine. Like I still kept up that like Asian standard. <laughs> like, yeah. I Were mean, you I in went... the band? Did you play instruments in high school? No, I played violin in middle school and then very quickly was like, I'm not disciplined enough for this and just kind okay, of... Okay, yeah, I messed with violin uh, as a kid, yeah. All yeah. these music, I messed with it, yeah. Suzuki method. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, Suzuki, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Suzuki method, yeah. Um, um, so when did you take an interest in like music, just making your own music and uh, like what are some of your influences like grow uh, what you grow up listening to like bands and everything um hmm. so I don't know I was always kind of into music when I was younger I listened to like a lot of metal <laughs> so oh, cool. like, so Lamb of God Children of Bodom uh-huh Arch Enemy uh, <laughs> I kind of okay. started it and Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden is not really metal. But, I was you know. just gonna say Iron Maiden. I was um, I didn't get into it later, but I remember all the kids who wore those shirts. It's like scared me because <laughs> yeah. it was like it reminded me of like you know like like those horror film posters like Evil Dead or X. Hey. You know, it remind like you know, what was the dude's name Eddie? 
the, the character Eddie, the, the evil demon looking dude <laughs> on all the shirts, it just scared me. But then I like actually listen to their music. Like I love like, um, I guess the one that resonated was like Run to the Hills. Oh yeah, it's a good and I'm one. like, oh, this is like, um, I was a jock in high school. I was like duped into wrestling. <laughs> And so everyone, like, so, like the heavyweight of our team would always put in, like, like back then it was tapes, you know, and we work out in the weight room, and then he would put Iron Maiden, run yeah. to the hills, and I was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> so I thought I'd share that. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, Iron Maiden's a great, great. Yeah, so did you, um, did you attend any uh, heavy metal concerts in high school? Uh... Not really, uh, mostly because I didn't really have any friends that were into it. I managed to dupe a friend into coming with me to a Circus Survive concert, but Circus Survive's not metal either. It's like more like progressive. Yeah. Kind of. And then, <laughs> um, and then, how long were you, so you? How long were you out in Texas before you made? You said you mentioned New York too, right? Uh yeah. So I I stayed there till. 2014 just until I graduated high school because like just the area I was in I just wanted to get the hell out as soon as I could yeah and, yeah I, I went to art school in New York City oh uh, what's the name of the art school a uh, Pratt Institute oh cool cool and then how what was the transition um being from Texas because that's a huge difference right Texas to New York <laughs> I, I I thought it was okay I mean pr prior to Houston. I lived in Taipei in Shanghai for a little mm -hmm. bit. So like I was kind of like I kind of already knew what to expect and I have like some family up in New York City so like, yeah I had visited before so it, it wasn't too bad. Also Pratt is in Brooklyn so we had like a bit more of a campus community in comparison yeah. to other uh, art and schools. There's more like, Asians out there. <laughs> yeah a lot more a Asians. A lot more right? <laughs> oh that's good. Yeah. Um, so you you mentioned uh, so your your ethnicity you're uh, Chinese, yeah, and Japanese. Oh yeah, you know what? That's where the Mariko comes from. Yeah, it's my middle name. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. So Chinese Japanese. Yeah. Um, I'm Korean, but I recently discovered within this past year, I thought I was a hundred percent Korean. My brother took an ancestry DNA test. And we discovered we're we have ten percent Japanese. Oh shit! I mean, Japan. That's did a pretty work. good percentage. Yeah. <laughs> so my mom was tripping out over that because she was she thought she was, you know, one hundred percent Korean. She was like tracing back to the war and like what you know her family lineage. Well, I mean, Japanese people are guilty of some pretty horrendous war crimes, so. <laughs> I didn't want to up. take it there with my mom. I brought that up. We were in Hawaii when we discovered it, um, but I didn't want to like bring that up. But I something probably happened maybe during the war or you know. Yeah, <laughs> oh my yeah. God, I would that's probably. It, it well, I'm, like I wasn't mad. I mean, I got a lot of good Japanese homies. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. So, um, do you what do you resonate more with the Japanese um, um, culture or the Chinese like? culture i don't know it, it's really hard to say it's just like on top of that growing up in the like in the u.s it, it kind of like really fucks with your sense of identity so it's like in like whenever i'd go back to japan it's like i'm not japanese enough because i'm already half chinese on top of that i'm american on top of it. like on top of everything and then like in china it's like the same thing it's like oh but you're yeah <laughs> so basically think, getting rejected from, well, like, i hear you i hear you i hear you um, when me and my brother uh, went to Korea as kids, um, we were about, I, I, how old is like maybe third or fourth or fifth grade? Like 10? I don't know. So yeah, we were around 10. Um, he had an electronic watch and he, we got mugged by some uh, local uh. neighborhood kids because they, they knew we were Americanized. Ooh, they can smell it. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you, so when you visit Japan, do they have like a, like a, a feeling of, oh, she's not from here, she's... Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I, I think when I go back, like, people more, I, like, associate me with being American. 
just yeah. like dress like I speak English you know so yeah I, I I actually try not to mention that I'm Chinese and I do the same in China where I like don't mention I'm Japanese because I feel oh, like oh that's so like interesting complicated. so you you just do it it's um circumstantial it's situational yeah that's so interesting because you would think you know that's what i don't like about asians and like the the the, because asians like not all asians but like in a stereotypical sense it is true like they they're really judgmental like you know like koreans are towards japanese and the way the japanese or towards chinese the way chinese look at Filipino, you know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. everyone's looking um, like, I don't, I never understood that, but do you think there's something to that, that that exists is this hierarchy, right? There is, yeah. Especially like, I, yeah, especially in Japan, I feel like just Japanese people are very, uh, just like not as welcoming towards like, like Korean or Chinese in general. Yeah. Um, what, um, cause I've never been to Japan. I, I mean, cause it's, I would, I can't, I would, I need to go there and visit there before I die. <laughs> For sure. Tokyo. So you're saying that you just have a feeling when you're visiting there, there, it's not the same as if you were like a hundred percent Japanese and you, you go there. Yeah. I mean, my mom was telling me even within like her friend group with like in Japan, they still have like some weird feeling like she she senses like something weird from them just because like even for her she's like 100 percent japanese but the fact that she like lives in the u.s and like hasn't lived in japan in like a really long time they're still like a little like you're not really japanese anymore wow <laughs> right that see i don't that that kind of confuses me because it's kind of like yeah how does that change you know what i'm saying i don't know but it's just yeah. like so you're yeah. saying, okay, so you're saying that, okay, a person that was, let's say, let's bring this, let's use this as an example. Let's say a cat that was born in Okinawa, right? Mm-hmm. And that they has, they never left and just stays in the village, right? Mm-hmm. They're looked at a certain way, opposed to, let's say, another cat was born in Okinawa, but then moved to New York, you know what I mean? And like went to school there and, and got the lingo, the, the New York accent and you know, got a part, it became a part of the culture, the New York culture, the American culture, and sp- started speaking kind of like that, you know, that type of lingo. But then that person goes back to Japan is looked at differently. Yes, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just like you've become Americanized. It's like you're not. Yeah. yeah. Now, have you, have you been to a lot of other Asian countries? Like, besides uh china and japan have you been to korea and like um philip the philippines uh i haven't been to either of those but uh yeah just just haven't been it's just i was too young like when i lived there and did not take advantage of the opportunity i had to travel at the time so yeah yeah, mostly just like uh yeah taiwan oh that's dope yeah um did actually recently not that recently like two years ago i did go to like thailand though for vacation with some oh that's friends. what's up how was that I, i've never been <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun we uh just hung out at the beach a lot <laughs> that's pretty much yeah. it how was the food the tom ka the coconut soup oh, it was so good <laughs> it was it was a bomb it was so bomb i was just like I really want to go back and everything was so cheap. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, so the cost of living is cheap there? It is. It's extremely cheap there. It, it's, yeah, everything's very affordable, but it's like only because we're tourists. I mean, like living there would be like a whole different situation because like, because the cost of living is low, that means you would get paid less. Less. If there. But what if you already had money saved up in the U.S. and you moved out there? Let's say you had $100,000 saved up. Could you live fat out there? Oh yeah, for sure. I you mean, buy I, a house with the hundred G's. You probably could, yeah, <laughs> like apartment or something, little apartment. So you off. could buy a property in Thailand for hella cheap. Mhm. So how much would like a condo be, like a one to two bedroom condo on the beach? I have no clue, but I would assume pretty reasonable. Would you say uh, you could get it for like fifty thousand dollars? 
I feel like you probably could. I mean, you see, like when I went out there to Thailand, you could see like a lot of like American guys, just like kind of older American guys, just like out there living, snatching up much younger <laughs> Thai girls. <laughs> it's you a little know, crazy. I mean, dynamic, but you know, that it's just, that's what happens there. And it's kind of, yeah, I mean, a lot of, um, what do you call like ex, uh, Patriots, expats. I think so. Yeah, it's like ex, like Marines, or you know, like older, like white dudes in the core, but then they're older now, and they're they. Hey, man, I mean, they're looking for love. Yeah, and, and uh, I feel bad because some of these women are just looking for a way out of their situation, and yeah, I but I don't. It, there's something unsettling about it, as far it as. You know that you know it's like you know you know what's interesting about that it's because the way like this culture is set up it's kind of like if you're not if you don't look a certain way if you don't have a certain amount of money or it, it's harder to to uh, attract a partner out here opposed to if you have money somewhere else and stuff but i still kind of look down on I mean doing that they're taking advantage of yeah, someone. Yeah, they totally that, are. It's 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 just, it's, it's, it's kind fucked of, up. Yeah, but I mean, like yeah. at the same sense, like it, at the same time, it's like you, these women are still, you know, to a degree, kind of consenting to it, and like they're getting something out of it. So who am I to judge them for doing that? Yeah. So if if this person can offer to help, like support their family, or like yeah, you know, out of now now as far as uh, th Thailand uh. Have you been to other like places surrounding you? Like, have you been to Vietnam and? I think I, I think I went to Vietnam when I was really little. I really don't remember. It yeah. kind of all blurs together. I was like maybe like seven or eight, so <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. But I think we did go to Vietnam, Palau, Singapore, Cambodia. Yeah, a couple of places, but like I said, I'm not entirely sure. I have to like look at old pictures. In yeah. Order to remember. Now, um, going back to just your music, like, uh, when did you like start recording the music? How did you link up with Full Tack? And uh, when did you make your move from New York to Vermont and record more stuff and feel more stuff? Um. I I guess I'll start with how I met uh, Jared. Uh, yeah, shout out to Full Tech, AKA Jared. <laughs> um, yeah, he actually slid into my DMs. <laughs> Whoa! Jared slid into Lil Mariko's DMs. What was his opening line? I mean, he, like, I had followed him on Instagram first because a friend of mine had shown me some of the video work that he was doing. And I yeah. thought, interesting yeah for sure and um yeah i just followed him and then he asked me if i could model some like shirts for him whoa he he, he pitched you with the modeling line yeah i mean he was very professional he didn't pull anything oh, like, okay it was a professional like <laughs> hey um i have this photo shoot I need, i'm looking for models yeah Are so like, available do i have to contact your agent it, it was much more casual than that. Okay, it was more casual, but it was professional. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I went over to his place. We took the pictures. Like, we hung out for a little bit. And were they provocative pictures, or were they just normal, like, you and day-to-day uh, -day attire? They're pretty normal. It was just like, I mean, it was just, like, a big oversized T-shirt that was, like, pretty much a dress on me. All right, cool, cool, cool. Continue. <laughs> we shot them on his roof, and we also went to, like, a shooting range. Um I, so I used to do archery as well. So um, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, he took me to a shooting range and he like just took some footage of me like shooting a bow and arrow, and uh -huh. that was pretty much it. And then like, I think like a month later, <laughs> I like hit him up. I was like, "Hey, let's hang out." Yeah. And um. So you I guys got along immediately. Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we were like friends pretty quickly I guess um but yeah wait what year was that I think that was like 2000 2018 I had just graduated from college so oh that's what's up yeah we're just kind of like a little lost because I mean I went to art school as you can imagine there's not a whole lot of career opportunities in that particular field um 
so yeah, I was just kind of doing some freelance work and like illustration modeling stuff. So. Oh yeah. So what kind of free, you, you mentioned uh, illustration illustrations. Yeah, I, I went to uh, Pratt for illustration. Like oh, fine. cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, and um, I guess after that, he like later started getting more into making music. Uh huh. We were just like he was working primarily with this other artist, um, and I I would just kind of be there because we were kind of seeing each other at the time. <laughs> Yeah, like what kind of where what was he making his stuff on? Like what kind of like instruments and everything? He was using FL Studio. So just Oh, like... cool. <laughs> so he um, would make all the beats and in electronic sounds on that? Yeah, on FL like Omnisphere and like um he he's more recently started getting into like more of the hardware like Yeah. Side of... Um now describe what uh what you FL Studio you said? <laughs> Um, describe to the viewers and listeners what exactly that is. I'm the worst person to ask this. No, no, no. You <laughs> just do your best. Basically, it's like a garage band, but less shitty. <laughs> okay. I use garage band. <laughs> so I, I, now, I'm, I'm, I don't take offense to that. Now, personally, I have to look up this F, FS studio. I feel like FL Studio is a little bit more user friendly and just um, when it comes to like making like the drum portion of a beat, it's like much more like intuitive and FL. Now, is it for PC or Mac? Uh, either one. Um, where could I purchase that? I think you could just Google FL I'll Studio. Just Google it and not, I could just get it. Um, it's software. Yeah, it's just software. <laughs> yeah. You know, the reason why I like GarageBand is because I know how to use it. It's like easy for me to like just cut and edit and I get my idea on there <laughs> fast. That's but you're true. saying the F, Sadie, is it FS or F1 Studio? Oh, FL. Okay, FL Studio allows you to not only record but create drum patterns. Uh-huh, <laughs> just, yeah, uh, I'm really not the a good person to ask this. I only just started learning no, how it's to- it's okay, just do your best, because now, because I'm interested, um, people might say, oh, Stevie Weeby's cheap, he won't spend money on anything. That's not true, I'm changing my ways. I've invested in more uh, of gear towards my uh, platform <laughs> and just creating stuff. Yes. Uh, for recording audio, I don't think, FL is good for that. Um, what is the other program that we use? Wait, Pro me... Tools? No, no, uh, wait, it's, lo oh, Logic is Logic. better. Logic. Lo yeah, Logic Pro is better to use for recording, I think. That's usually what Jared uses. I hear doing. that a lot, or Ableton. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, FL is, like, really, like, only good if you're doing a lot of stuff that's like heavy and drums everything else is yeah there. I mean I usually do, I'm, I'm sample heavy so um but I'm always looking for some new some some new drum patterns hmm. yeah, yeah it's, it's FL studios I'm writing that down <laughs> so tell me more so okay so um you and uh Full tack, when did you start coming up with these concepts in the style, your style of creating your specific type of music? Uh, well, I mean, last year when we made that like stupid viral song, Where's My Jewel, um, it was just us messing around and like we saw that that kind of sound worked. So we figured we might as well stick to it, <laughs> write it out, see how it goes. So um, you, you mentioned sound, like how did you even discover, the, how did you create, even begin creating a sound like that? Did it just, because I always wonder how like people get their, where they get their inspiration from. Um, I don't know, we just thought it'd be funny to like have this like horrible braggy like voice and then to like have it contrast heavily with, you know, me just like fucking screaming. Like I mean, okay, I, that's what the part I loved about what y'all are doing. How did you, it's similar to like how Be Real from Cypress Hill discovered that nasally voice that he does, you know? Mm. Um, it's distinct. 
how did you come up with that? Were you just experimenting one night, screaming in the garage? Uh, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> just like messing around. Um, so the, the artist that Jared was working with previously, we were like just sitting in the studio kind of like, you know, thinking about songs. And then I was like, I can scream really, really loud. Uh, and they're like, yeah. okay, just, just do it. Fuck it. And so, um, it, yeah, it works. I, it, it, it definitely <laughs> works. They had me just scream, and then from there, we I figured, like, just keep doing it, because it's kind of, it's fun. Yeah. Have your folks heard any of your art or music? I try not to show them. <laughs> yeah, generally, I don't really show them, so no, I don't think so. But they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, music. And they're like, I've can we hear it? I've abstained from showing my mom as well. Yeah, I feel like she, my mom in particular, would be very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever thought about doing it? Because I actually gave my mom a CD, and years later, it was still in the shrink wrap <laughs> with dust on it. So I'm like, well, she don't even know what to do with it anyway when I give her my music. Well, uh, I, I definitely thought about maybe showing my dad, because he's a bit more open to things like that but at the same time my dad's kind of the type who, who would like receive like a link and not never actually open it he'd be like it's right. best not to know right right so you man this is so cool so you did it just out of ex you're experimenting and having fun <laughs> yeah pretty and much your vi your videos going viral like what was your response like as far as like the way people responded to it um Honestly, I was kind of taken aback of about how like positive people were because I was like, "This is the most fucking annoying song ever." Why <laughs> are people vibing to this? Yeah. So, so your yeah, intent was to just to fuck fuck around, right? Yeah, just like make a silly song. It wasn't supposed to be like super serious or anything, but yeah, I mean, I I'm glad that other people picked up on that too. Just like me and Jared having fun. That's awesome. I want to, I want to actually like just, just kind of review what you just said there. And I think that a lot of aspiring artists can learn from what you just said. You're like, dude, I was just having fun and it's silly. And, and your intent wasn't to like do a certain thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was I, just to have fun. And then just surprisingly people liked it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've noticed like a lot of artists, nowadays um especially like younger ones like oh very, very they're methodical. yeah they're super methodical and it's like if something's not fun for you then don't do it yeah yeah i like that too let's repeat what you just said if something's not fun for you then don't do it it's yeah. simple but it's profound at the same time <laughs> I mean, are, like, are you saying listeners and people who like, like kind of um, look at the art from a distance, they could tell a difference between if it's like, if this person's trying to do a certain thing opposed to, oh, this person's having fun. I think people, I think people take for granted just how smart a lot of like listeners can be. I, I think it's fairly obvious when someone's like not having fun in their work, it's like you, you can, you can tell. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's really, like when something comes out forced, I feel like it's very obvious. Um, you know, and, it's, you know, I, that's fine. I, you know, it's like if you're trying to reach like a certain level, like there are steps you have to take to get there. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Just <laughs> like, even if you like fuck up or make something like really horrible or shitty, it's like, who cares? It's like, like yeah. that's part of the learning process. Just put it out there. You know, That's not, so cool. I'm, I'm glad that y'all decided just to do it out of fun and you had the right attitude to create it. Um, now, have y'all, like, what was like it like doing your first shows and stuff? Oh, I haven't done any shows yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I, I know we're in a, it's a bad time because of quarantine and COVID, but I think what, especially what y'all are doing you and full tack, I think it would translate well in a live setting. 
it would be crazy like to like go to your show and then you screaming and then him doing his shit you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's true i mean i i just recently got like a like a booking manager so she's going to help me with all my tours and stuff but i yeah. mean i have a lot of anxiety about it just in general i mean growing up i'm like was always pretty reserved. So the idea of getting on a stage and screaming in front of a lot of people is a little horrifying, but I'm yeah. hoping, you know, I'll find, find my groove in that and just kind of yeah, figure it out. I mean, my, my suggestion is just have the same outlook and attitude the same way you have towards your music itself and have fun. Yeah, I if, mean, if you're having fun doing creating it, why not have fun when you're performing it as well, you know? I mean, I figured at the very worst, I'll go on stage completely blindfolded and just pretend no one's there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was uh, in my band, Mongchi, uh, for when we, one of our shows, I put on just all, all naked, but with just a nut cup. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so I had a hockey nut cup, and then um, one of my bandmates painted all this crazy stuff on me, and then... For one of the, I don't know what tour it was, but one of the, on one of the dates on the tour, he dared me and begged me to put on, to put in an anal, um, like an anal ball. Oh, my butt butt. Butt. What was it called? An a anal plug. <laughs> so it was, it was a, uh, like an anal plug, but with, um, a, like a raccoon tail. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Picking out of the anal plug. Oh, did you do it? No, but this is what he did. So, oh, it was during, okay, I know, I remember now. It was for uh, our, we were in Tacoma, Washington. Mm -hmm. We're in, uh, where, is that where it is? It's, no, Tacoma, is that Seattle, right? Hold up, let me look at the, my, my, my geographics are wrong. That's okay. Yeah, Tacoma, Washington, Tacoma, Washington at the art center there. He before our um our sound check, mm -hmm. he ran to um uh, uh like adult porn store, <laughs> and he bought it and brought it to the bus. Oh wow! And I thought about doing it because you know it, it's kind of like he dared me to. I think there was like he money lived. involved too. But I saw how thick the uh, what do you call again the ball or the bead? The plug part? The plug was like a oversized kind of an egg. I mean, so if you haven't put anything up there before. No, uh, no, eggs are only. Yeah, my butt's only for pooing. Um, you didn't so, provide lube, nothing? He just handed you the fucking plug? Yeah, and he took it out of the box, and I think that my um, butt would have bled, it would have, blood would have, would have come out. Yeah, if you went in there dry for sure. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what you, you have say? to put lube on it, otherwise it's no, not going anywhere. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. That's no, no kind of lube in my um, anal region there. No. Okay. Well, it's not. I yeah. I, exit only. But um, I forgot. I kind of got off topic. I'm so sorry. Uh, what, what what was I talking about? Music. Oh, performing. <laughs> And just having fun. So I said, for you, since you had fun making the music with um, full tack, why not do have the same attitude in performance? That's true. That's very true. I, I mean, I, I feel like now that I'm older, maybe performance anxiety will be something a little bit easier for me to overcome. Because as I get older, I realize I don't care <laughs> anymore. So the life's too short to care as far as like how people would re will react to anything you put out in life. It's like whatever. It's like I don't know you. I don't care. <laughs> and not only that, life's too short. And not you could make the per you could write the perfect novel and make the perfect movie, make the perfect album. There's someone out there in the world that's gonna have a problem with it. Yeah, exactly. And it's, that's the goddamn truth. <laughs> exactly. Um, I but wanted to encourage you though. Once this um, epidemic, I mean, this pandemic is over, um, to, yeah, I, I mean, I think people who even watch this, then they'll get familiar to who you are. They'll, they'll come and, and see y'all perform. Yeah, I mean, like, to, like, 
also I'd keep in mind like people who would come to a concert of mine probably are not expecting like some immaculate performance anyway. Yeah, they're not expecting like Bjork. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. You know what like, I'm saying? Or like Radiohead. Like they're not gonna get none of that. <laughs> they're here to no, see they're gonna see something crazy. Exactly. So you know, you know what I picture with you. I mean, this is you don't have to do this, but I picture when you you when y'all perform, fire will be involved. Like you guys will set the fire on stage and crazy costumes. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, that would be literally lit if I had yeah, fire. Yeah, that would be that would actually be lit. Yeah, <laughs> it would be lit. It would be very lit. <laughs> I don't like that word. I don't like certain lingo as far as, you know, what, but I like it. it it's, um, it makes sense in this particular uh, scenario. It would actually be lit because I'm, yes. I'm asking y'all to use like a fire. Yes, that <laughs> would be great. Yeah. Now, um, we're getting kind of towards the last 10 minutes of the interview. I mean, this wasn't that hard. I mean, how are you feeling? Um, this far as far as our the interview uh, good I mean like I I don't have a lot of interview experience so it's kind of fine I mean you're fine yeah like actual insight into what I'm doing or like no it's fine it's fine I I, I kind of like it like this more organic I don't like it when my guests have they prepared too much because it seems forced but with you it just seems like you're just so kind of like going with the flow I like that you know <laughs> yeah. now as far as um, future, where can people download or support your music? Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, YouTube. What should they type in? Oh, Lil Mariko. <laughs> and spell that out for the viewers and listeners. L-I-L -L space M-A-R-I-K-O. That's where you So it's not little it. with two T's, it's L-I-L. -L. Yeah. Um, L-I-L -L space M A R I K O, Mariko. Yeah. Um, and what about? Don't you have a YouTube channel you want to plug to? I know, I know, Full Tax got one. Uh, no, I don't have one. I just kind of leave the uploading up to him because I mean, he. Can we plug Full Tax? I mean, because your stuff's on there too. Oh yeah, that's. Oh, I'm such a piece of crap. I don't even know his YouTube. You gotta look out for your boy. Let me double check. I think on YouTube it's just full tack, no space. That's F U L L oh, sorry, there space T A C. Yep, there you there. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you did that. Okay. Full <laughs> tack in full effect. Subscribe today. And so, what about merch or um, anything of that nature? Uh, I have zero merch except. Um, I do have shirts that have my illustration on it that I printed like two years ago that I'm What's still up? getting. What's up? Can, how, can, how can fans get a hold of that? Oh, um, wait, okay. I don't, I don't know any of my own plugs. Isn't that awful? You better get this <laughs> program, little Mariko. I know, right? Uh, oh, okay. Wait. What, one second. <laughs> Such a piece of crap. I'm sorry. Ah. Okay, well, I'm an Etsy. And my Etsy is Mariko Jung. So M A R I K O Z H A N G. And um, yeah. spell that out one more time. Oh, M A R I K O Z H A N G. That's my Etsy. And you can find it through my art account, which is just okay. Mariko. And what types of stuff is on your Etsy? Just that one shirt. <laughs> okay, how much for a shirt? Uh, I, 25, I can show it to you. <laughs> yeah, show it to the camera so the viewers, I mean, so the, yeah, viewers could take a look at uh, what they're going to get. Uh, one second. Oh, yeah. so, okay, I have to go get it. Uh, I am so horribly unprepared. I'm so uh, it, It's okay. This is just, it's organic and it, it's like. Anyway, yeah. I oh, dope. Who did the art? I did. Oh, dope. Okay, yeah. so go on our Etsy and purchase one of those shirts today, folks. Yeah? Yeah, it was, it was originally a ballpoint pen illustration that I had printed. on. Hey, why don't you make little stickers of that? Because I'm lazy. 
<laughs> well, I'm just throwing it out there. That'd be dope. It's true. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. It was just like the whole printing process was very complicated and I never Oh, did you do it yourself or did you go through a manufacturer? Uh, I went to like, um, I printed them out through like a friend of a friend. <laughs> so, Joe, like, so how much do you have in stock? I think I still have like, I want to say like 20 shirts left. <laughs> so folks, get your shirt today. There's a limited supply. There's only <laughs> 20 shirts left. Okay. Get it today on our Etsy. Say it <laughs> one more time. What's your Etsy? Mariko Jong. <laughs> that, that's, that's my Etsy. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. This is a very compelling sales pitch, but no, you know. No, this is going to work. M-A-R-I-K-O space C-Z-H-A-N-G. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Any um, future uh, videos uh, that you're working on right now and uh, pro future projects or albums, EPs you're working on right now that people could check out? Uh, well, right now uh, we are in the process of filming the shiny music video. I intend on covering my entire body in glitter for that. So go, go. And that's um, creative. That's creative. <laughs> we finished recording uh, this new song called Simp. <laughs> oh, I like um, that. How'd you get the idea? Where'd you get the concept from? Simp? Yeah. I just thought it was a like, funny meme thing <laughs> to call someone a simp. simp. Oh, so what, is that short for simpleton? No, uh, it's like... Uh, like wimp? No, no, no. A simp is like a... Wait, fuck, what? There's like a whole acronym for it. It's, um... Shoot, I'm... I need to find that out. It's like sucker for like... Oh, sucker idolizing mediocre pussy. Okay, I've never heard that before. A simp? It says someone way too much for a person they like. Yeah. Okay, that's, so that's, yeah, so that's, what's the one you got? Sucker idolizing mediocre pussy. Okay. <laughs> okay. It can also mean a silly or foolish person as well, right? So there, there could be two different meanings. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the song kind of revolves around... Um, Your definition. Yeah, like a guy who's just like weirdly obsessed with a stranger on the internet who they've okay, never... Okay, okay. And then you know, when, is that how close? Is that done? Is that finished? Uh, almost finished. We're still um, kind of EQing it and like fixing up the beat but hopefully it will be out soon either next month or um yeah possibly next month we're still just like we just kind of like do things on our own schedule cool. now where can people are you on spotify or um soundcloud or bandcamp is there any other platforms to reach your music uh yeah i apple music and spotify uh the soundcloud is just Jared's SoundCloud, which I think is also just full tech. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think where else <laughs> we post our music. Oh, at YouTube as well, I think. Um, yeah. Loaded there. Um, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Well, that's, I guess, I think we covered it. Do, do you think we missed anything? I didn't want to miss anything as far as. Um, uh, not that yeah. I can think of. <laughs> oh, your Instagram. Oh, yeah, it's just um, cat, M-A-R-I-K-O-Z. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's under Lil Mariko, too, on your Instagram, right? Yeah, it, like, I think I put Lil Mariko for the name, but the actual username is cat Mariko Z. Yeah, okay, so let me spell that out. It's K-A-T-M-A-R-I-K-O-Z. Yeah? That's correct. Thank you for your time and the best of luck to you and Full Tack. And I hope you all create more fun music in the future. <laughs> Thank you for having okay. me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay, bye bye. Okay. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. Bye.
Okay, that's it. That was the Lil Mariko um, interview. Thanks for tuning in. I have a couple shout outs, okay? Um, so we have a Patreon attached to the show. If you want to help support uh, the platform to keep, to keep it going, uh, go to uh, patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Um, I have a website. Uh, if you want to pick up any merch, it's uh, stevieweebyshow.com, okay? Just keep in mind, because of the pandemic and the coronavirus, shipping is going to be a little bit delayed, but I'm on top of it, okay? I check every day. Um, the newest patrons this week are John Rehill, Mel K, and Justin Virin. I hope I'm saying that right, uh, Justin. Uh, we're still working on the music video, The Pod in Which We Travel. We're on post-production for that. Um, just working out some final details. Be patient with me. Uh, my Instagram's at Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. Um, my band camps, StevieWeebyBandCamp.com. All my, um, mo like 90% of my albums are on there. So check that out. I'm currently working on a new project, a concept project, um, it's a Gene Wilder stir crazy project kind of um, based around the whole stir crazy movie. It's one of my favorite uh, movies of all time. Rest in peace, Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. But um, I'm, I'm on, I'm, 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 I'm done with one song. I'm on my second beat. And so I'm on it. Okay. And I'm having fun doing it. I mean, it's uh, as far as the different types of uh, loops and samples I'm finding it's, it's going to be different than the ode to my pie. That was more depressing because I was going through, you know, my father's death and that was an outlet for that type of music. But this is more, I didn't lose my, my, um, my style as far as like my aesthetic, but it's just going to be more, a little bit more upbeat than the past project. So um, that's why Little Ray is still out um, near the Zeta Reticuli constellation. I didn't, you know, he's not dead, but he's taking a break right now because Stevie's working on some new, uh, new project, okay? I do have a PO box if you wanna send in um, any uh, letters or um, boxes or whatever, mail. Send your uh, packages to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, PO Box 1391. LA California 90093. With that being said, thanks for tuning in and uh, come back next week. All right, peace.